Now it's not a solid mass, so we can't just use one of the equations in our lovely page 314 of our book. Instead, we actually have to treat it as three separate objects. If you can see, we have one disc right here, a second disc over here, and we have there's a very small thin disc in the middle. Now to do this, what we had to do was we had to take uh, the total mass of the yo-yo itself. Now the mass is distributed. Uh, assumingly evenly throughout the whole entire yo-yo because it is made of the same wood. Uh, to do this now we have to look at the fractions of what proportion does this disc take up of the whole entire mass of the yo-yo. To do this we looked at the volumes. Now when we look at the volumes the easiest way to do this is actually to assume that each individual disc of the yo-yo is a solid cylinder. That means that these curved edges would actually be straight. This would add a margin of error but it would give us a rough uh, ratio in which we can use later on to determine the mass. So now looking at the volumes. As you can see here, these are the calculations which we have for the yo-yo itself. The radius of the outer disc is 0.29 meters. The radius of the inner discs is 0.006 meters. Now the width of the outer disc is 0.015 meters and the width of the inner disc is 0.003 meters. Using this we found uh, the volume of the large disc first. So volume of a cylinder equals pi r squared times the height of the cylinder. Doing the calculations, we ended up with the volume of the large cylinder is, is 3.96 times 10 to the negative fifth meters cubed. Using the same uh, equation, we found the volume of the center disc, which came out to be 3.39 times 10 to the negative seventh meters cubed. So now we have to look at the total volume of the yo-yo itself. This would be two times the outer disc because there are one, two discs, uh, one for each side, plus the center disc. This came out to being 7.95 times 10 to the negative fifth meters cubed. That is the total volume of the yo-yo. And now we're going to go look at what proportion these volumes lead and what that means for grams. So what's the point of finding all these volumes? Well, since we know the volumes now, we can set up a proportion from which we can find how much each component, uh, how much the mass is. Um, so we did that using the total number underneath each of the uh, smaller volumes. And we were able to find that each of the outer cylinders was about 49.8% of the total volume. Um, opposed to that, the center cylinder was only 0.426% of the total volume. Uh, we know the uh, mass of the entire uh, yo-yo because we weighed that earlier, or we massed it earlier, I guess. And um, applying that to those percents, we got the each of the outer discs is 24.0 grams and the disc in the center is only 0.205 grams. Inertia. How did we calculate it? This is how we calculated it. The moment of inertia of a cylinder, according to page 314, is one half times the mass times the radius squared. After measuring the radius for each of the outer and the center parts, and converting the masses of each to kilograms, we calculated the moment of inertia for each part. After doing the calculations for the outer part, we figured out that the moment of inertia was 1.01 times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms times meters squared over radians. For the center, it was even smaller, and it was 3.69 times 10 to the negative eighth kilograms times meters squared over radians. We added the two small numbers together to get a final moment of inertia, a total moment of inertia of 
2.024 times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms times meters squared over radians. Okay, so doing the trials as shown here. All right, three, two, one, go. We measured the time it took to extend the yo-yo. The average that we got at 10 trials was 0.82 seconds, which was fairly fast. So as we all know, average velocity equals distance over time. Since the distance of the stretch string was 1.005 meters and the average time was 0.82 seconds, we were able to calculate that the average velocity was 1.23 meters per second. We then converted that into angular velocity, um, noting that omega equals v over the radius. Um, we used the radius of the center of the cylinder, since that's the radius that the string is actually turning around. So that's 1.23 meters per second over 0 0.006 meters equals 205 radians per second. That's pretty quick. Using that, we decided to uh, figure out the angular acceleration as well. Um, angular velocities over time, as shown here, ended up equaling 500 radians per second squared. Now we used the velocities which we just found, as well as our other knowledge which we got from the masses, uh, to calculate the total energy uh, using the energy equation itself. Uh, which boiled down to the potential initial equals the kinetic of the linear uh, kinetic energy plus the rotational kinetic energy plus work out or work lost. Uh, we were able to get rid of uh, initial kinetic energy uh, in both cases because the yo-yo uh, itself was starting at a stop both linearly and rotationally. We were also able to get rid of work in uh, because the, once again uh, no force was applied, the yo-yo was just let go. Uh, thus, we have boiled it down to this equation. Now, looking at the potential, this equals mgh, uh, as we very well know. Uh, using what we had previously, we were able to get 0.485 joules uh, of potential kinetic energy. Potential energy. Um, so now let's look how the kinetic compared to that. Uh, when figuring out the linear and the rotational, we were able to use the uh, standard one half mv squared for the uh, linear. Using the velocities just found, as well as uh, the known mass, we were able to come up with 0.037 joules of linear kinetic energy. Looking at the rotational now, we are now able to use the moment of inertia, which uh, we calculated, as well as the rotational velocity, in order to calculate for uh, the rotational kinetic energy, 0.425 joules, which was significantly more than the 0.037 joules, as you can see, because the yo-yo was spinning uh, much faster than it was falling. Uh, when adding these together uh, to solve for the work out, you see that we lost 0.023 joules of energy. Uh, this can be due to a number of factors, uh, which we will discuss later. So David, yeah. in the end we did get that work out. What do you think that's from? Um, well, it takes some energy to push the air out of the way. Yeah, probably friction too. Because when the yo-yo spins, it is sliding on the string the whole entire time. Yeah, that's true. What about sources of air? What other things can we talk about? Huh. Well, the string isn't wound the same way every time, is it? No, that probably has to actually mess up with the distance and uh, the rate at which the yo-yo would fall. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's something that we can't guarantee. Hmm. Also, I mean, we use the cylinder for those equations, right? The oh, yo-yo, yeah. it's kind of rounded. Yeah, it is curved on the edges. So we probably did overcompensate for what the mass actually was on the edge of the yo-yo. That would actually mean that more mass would be in the center, which would actually make the yo-yo spin, well, faster. Nice. Huh. Well, and if it spun faster, that would actually minimize our workout, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Huh. So maybe that's one of the places, too. That'd be a pretty big one. There wasn't a really accurate way to measure the yo-yo's mass.